Okay, we got the board back in. We've tested all this. We are looking for the new side drive, which is going to be here on the board. Over here where my, my oscilloscope probe is. Uh, we'll power up. And we should see this drop down. There it goes down. And a little adjustment here. And there is the low side drive. And if we switch that to AC coupling, we should be able to zoom in on that. And that is a good looking drive. All right, so we have low side drive, low side drive, low side drive, low side drive. All right, all of them. Shut her down, and then I'm going to stick this meter over here. Crank it up to 600 volts. And let's go from. That side to that side. Got it on one more time. So see, this is the rail voltage from positive to negative. So we're up at over 250 volts. And then this was positive rail. There's negative rail. So if you measure across them, shazamming, you know, 260 volts, it's going to bite you. So now we can watch we can watch that whole thing go down. I just hold that there. And that's it bleeding off. And it slowly does it and it does go all the way down to zero eventually. You can put a high value resistor across there uh, to help bleed it down faster. We can take our our one here this is a little bit low value uh, this is 240 uh, but it ought, to, it ought to work so we can go from there Ooh. except don't touch these I'm, it's a it's an electro boom episode I just got hit with 120 volt Ooh, and it got hot that's still a lot of voltage. Them some big caps. So like I said, you would normally go a little higher, higher uh, resistance in this. This is really good for the 12 volt side, not the 120 volt side. Let's see what we're down to from going through me and the uh, thing. We're down to 42 volts already. We can drain her down some more here. that set in there a minute that resistor is big enough to handle it and that'll get all these big old caps done but yeah you touch those and it'll give you a shock good thing that it drained down you guys didn't know you was watching electro boom did you and we're down to zero perfect now we can add in our test fits so I'm just going to gently solder one to here 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 and here on each side and we'll test and see if we get high side drive and uh, maybe even play uh, a half a second of music through it at super low volume to make sure it doesn't sound like total crap and uh, uh, as long as that all works and as long as all the drive looks good we will uh, put the new FETs in and they are right here so I am Okay, uh, so we got the test fits in, uh, so we're going to give it a test, but I think I forgot to show you guys this pin to that. Good continuity, pulled via, no deal. Does not hurt it on that one. Like I said, we got lucky, but that's planned luck, the way you're taking it out, so that if you do end up screwing up, it's going to be one of those ones that's like that. So we should be going for the O-scope probe, power on the power. And we're going to look at the back 
So it should be a big signal on the high side. Ba bam, there it is. So we're going to leave that just like that. Those did not get warm. So let's go ahead and cheat for a second. And grab some speaker wire. And send a tiny bit of music to it. Hold this in. Uh, you guys can't see the power up. So I, oh, if I switch to full work here. And I tilt a little bit that way. We're gonna let it reflect off my finger, maybe. Oh, maybe we get colored here. Bunch of writing on it. Uh, and turn off the overhead light. Maybe it'll help. That is playing bass. We're gonna call that done. So. <clears throat> We are good to uh, shut off the power, uh, disconnect. Oh, and while we're at it, now with FETs in it, I'll bet money. Yeah, the uh, rail caps drain really, really quick once there's FETs in it. So that always helps. Uh, and that completed that circuit for the pull down resistors really well. Uh, so the only thing is I'll take these uh, fets off, uh, clean up the holes again real quick, and I will install the, the new fets. Um, I can't tell from this. I'll have to look uh, if these were seated all the way down. If they are, it's super easy to install them. Otherwise, since we have all these uh, other uh, power supply fets and the rectifiers, we can always set our piece of paper up here behind it, put our pencil mark, to set the heights of the new FETs for the installed so the clip will be in the exact right spot and it'll uh, rest against the uh, sill pad perfectly. So next you see this, it should have all the FETs in and I'll actually slide it back in the case, get the clips on. Uh, I may show a couple of clip install, uh, the last couple clip installs, uh, just so you see how I do that. I've got it in some other videos, but we'll toss it in. Uh, and then we'll actually play some music through this thing uh, once it's in its heat sink proper. Alrighty. Uh, as promised, I'll show a couple clips here. <clears throat> so these clips go in. I just use a little driver with a wedge. It can fit in there like so. Um, when you set it down in, make sure your little notch window is in between the two fits. If it's covering two fits, come in and I tilt down because I want to drive back in first. And then I tilt up and make sure it's fully seated. This one on this side. Make sure the window's lined up. Bam, bam. You can get them all in that way. Okay, we're back. Uh, sorry the scar is upside down, but my power supply is on that side, and that's where the power hookups are, and the RCAs are over here. So it's not my fault. Scar put their logo on upside down. Uh, <laughs> when I get moved, I may have to redo how my bench is so I can make sure this this looks pretty. But I've got the uh, scope here, and we'll look. The, uh, the amp is just hooked up just for sound testing. Uh, and if I can get this far over and just get the RCAs in. So let's see if we can get a shot. Focus. There we go. And if I can slide all my controls, and pause. And it comes up to power.
So she's working. Uh, I don't have a load big enough to test this at 4,500 watts at low enough stuff. So I'm going to redo my test bench to put the do the thousand watt load I have on it and run it as hard as I can uh, and let it cook in as best I can. And then the owner will just have to be gentle, bring it up, get it warm a few times, and let the thermal paste uh, warm up so that that way those springs push against the fets a little bit more and that thermal paste paste will soften and kind of squish out a little bit more before he really starts slamming it hard. Uh, you know, give it a couple of nice easy runs first and, and let it go through its paces. Uh, like I said, I'll do as hard as I can here. Uh, but <clears throat> it's not for me wanting to not be able to get the, uh, to drive them hard. It's these big load resistors have been out of stock, these thousand waters. As soon as they get back in and I have and I notice that I have the spare change, I am going to make sure I get at least another three of them, if not five, so that I can do some of these bigger amps, no problem. Uh, maybe even eight <laughs> of them in total. Uh, at least four of them in total so I can go up to 4,000 watt easy. The, the resistor will let me do more than that in bursts, uh, and I've got some heat sinks to uh, install and some fans. I'm going to build a enclosure so that's a cooled load bank and so I can push it past what I've got so four of them may be plenty for most everything unless people start giving me some that are so huge that I've got to buy an extra bench uh, but anyways uh, this thing's fixed man thanks for watching uh, comment that's always the fun part uh, like and subscribe and uh, here was the four dead parts man uh, this one was the worst. The other two died, but they didn't take anything. This one's probably the culprit that was at first uh, took the biggest brunt, and then these others went with it. Maybe a weak link. I don't know. Uh, so could be install, could be lots of other, other stuff. But uh, yeah, she is back alive, and we will cook her in. And like I said, thanks for watching, uh, and I'll catch you in the next video.